Hello, my friend. Welcome to my favorite video of the month. It is favorites and fails time where I take the worst products that I tried this month and I count all the way up to the best products that I tried this month. We have a nice balance of things I really didn't like, some mediocre stuff and some stuff that I'm really loving. So if you wanna know what those things are, oh, hang tight. We are getting into them right now. As you know, I always start off my favorites and fails countdown with something that I am loving lately that I am not sponsored to tell you. And I had a little bit of trouble thinking of something that I'm super into right now. I've talked about podcasts and I've talked about kitchen equipment and I've talked about all kinds of things in this space. But honestly, the thing that I'm thinking about right now is Stranger Things season four. And I know that that's a weird thing to shout out because it's not like they need me in any way to shout them out. But that's like what's in the front of my mind because when this video goes live is the day that the rest of the season goes live. And I am losing my mind over the season. Absolutely losing my mind. I really loved season one. I thought season two was pretty good. Season three, uh, it was fine. I'm glad I watched it, but it was fine. Definitely not something if that had been season one, I would have told people to go watch. But season four, my friend, the twists and turns and the anxiety, like there are some episodes where I looked at my family and I was like, this is freaking stressful, man. Like. <laughs> I can't even, like I'm so stressed out right now. If you're looking for something low stress to watch, this is not the show for you. Because we're talking about shows for a minute, the other show I've been watching recently is a show called The Boys and it's on Amazon Prime, I believe is where I'm watching it. Honestly, like, ooh, I don't really, mm. I started watching it because I'm a huge Jensen Ackles fan. I'm a huge Supernatural fan. He played Dean on that show. I miss him. I miss him as an actor and I heard he was gonna be on the season, so I watched the first two seasons, now they're on the third one, and honestly, like, especially this season, it's like, I am just not digging on the writing. I think that it's just overly, like they take the things that they say people like, like sex and violence and all that people, and they just blow it up to an unnecessary level. Like the last episode I watched was something called Hero Gasm, and it was just, like they hyped it up as being this thing that you can't unsee and all of that and all. It was stupid. It was straight up stupid. So I have a favorite in Stranger Things season four, and I have a fail in the boys, unfortunately, even though I still love Jensen Ackles, and I love his acting in this, of course. He was incredible in Supernatural, too. I mean, but that the writing is just not fabulous. That's just my opinion. I'd love to know your thoughts down in the comments down below. But now let us talk about makeup, starting with the worst product I've been trying this month. I never thought I would talk about television shows <laughs> in my hashtag not sponsored feature, but you know, that's what's on my mind. So that's where we went. Anyway, let's talk about number 10. So I had purchased this as part of a drugstore haul kind of video, trying to find hidden gems. And this sucks, man. I, I hate that this sucks, but it does. This is the CoverGirl Olay Advanced Radiance Age Defying Makeup Plus Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 10. So first of all, First of all, <laughs> SPF 10, who is using SPF 10 at this point? Is this 1995 again? Like why, why is this SP SPF? I mean, SPF 10 is better than nothing, okay? We all know this, it's better than nothing. But this is not like anything I would promote as sunscreen, like ever in a million years. But the big issue I have with this is that it looks like crap on the skin. It looks like absolute crap. It looks patchy, it wears down poorly, it settles into my fine lines and wrinkles. It is just a crap foundation for me. I have normal skin. So if you have oily or dry skin and this works great for you, I would love to know because I don't wanna lead people away from this because I just have a different skin type than they do. Um, but yeah, this is this is trash, man. Like I don't even wanna use it anymore. I'm gonna wait to hear from you all to see if this works for any other skin types and see if I have a friend I can pass this to. Maybe I can mix it in with some other foundations and it'll be okay, that way it won't go to waste. We'll see. 
Number nine was sent to me in PR by Essence, and I absolutely love Essence products. There's so much to love about that brand. This mascara is brand new, and it is not fabulous, unfortunately. I had really high hopes. I think it's a fantastic concept. This is the Drub Double Trouble Mascara, and this is the waterproof one. They did send both the regular and the waterproof. I find they perform very similarly. So this is the, the thing behind it, and I was really excited about this one, and I think that's why I'm so disappointed in it. So what you have have here is you have a volumizing side, which is the fat side, and then you have the more sparse side, which is the defined side. So what you do is you put in the volume and then you flip it and then you define to break up any clumps. The problem is, is there's like no volume in this mascara. So if you already have a lot of lashes and you're just looking for some length, you may love this. You may find that it's great. I haven't had any problems with flaking. I personally have never had problems with smudging, so I can't speak to that. The length is pretty nice. It's fine, but it's advertised as a volume mascara and it just doesn't give that. They needed to give this formula more oomph to go with this really cool brush. So maybe they'll go at it again with something like this with a thicker formula of mascara, or maybe the more I use it, I've been using it for about a month, so maybe in another month or two, it'll thicken up a little bit just naturally and I'll like it better, but I don't wanna have to wait. <laughs> like I wanted to just be good from the jump and it's just not, unfortunately. Some of y'all gonna be real mad at me. This always hits, like number seven is when it always hits where I'm like, y'all gonna be mad. <laughs> Because I know some people absolutely love this product. I don't, I don't love it. This is the Jones Road Miracle Balm in Dusty Rose. And one of the big things when I got this that you all told me that I needed to do was make sure to bust through the film at the top. And they do say that on the website. So it's real hard here. And you can see how it's like squishy here. There's a difference in texture. It's not squishy there, it's squishy there because I broke through the balm, uh, the top layer, which is really, really important. Now this is gonna be great for the right person. If you want a dewy look, if you maybe you have really dry skin and you want a dewy look and you want the slightest flush of color, you're probably going to love this because it is very moisturizing. It feels really hydrating on, maybe not hydrating, I would say more moisturizing, more like oily on the skin almost. So if you have dry skin, it's probably going to feel really, really good. The problem is, is that there's essentially no pigmentation. <laughs> <laughs> and when once you blend it out, it just gives, you see how it just gives a shine with this teeny tiny hint of color, which is gonna be great for some people. It's not enough for me, especially at this price point. I think I'm just the wrong person for this product is what it comes down to. The other thing I wanted to mention is even from here, I can smell it. It has like a very crisp, uh, I think uh, Bobby said it's a ginger scent to it. It's very, it smells like I just got sushi, which is very refreshing. It's very awake, like it makes you want to be awake, but it's, but some people, I have a feeling this is going to give them a headache because it is really, really strong. I will say I did put it on today and I cannot smell it unless I have the product open and smelling it, but like it's even giving me a little bit of a headache and I don't get headaches from scents. So just be aware of that. Uh, and again, just disclaimer, it's just not for me, but it could be for other people based. That's why I try to give you so many details, decide whether it's going to be right for you or not and why it's not number 10, it's number eight. Next up, I, I knew I probably shouldn't get these, but I got them anyway, because I do tend to really like hip dot products. And I was a Girl Scout and I have a very sentimental attachment to Girl Scouts and Girl Scout cookies because it was a part of my childhood. So I got the Girl Scout cookie lipstick set from hip dot and these are fine. We're moving into the things that are just fine, but could be better. Uh, my big complaint about these is the same complaint I had about the Reese's lipsticks. Reese's, not Reese's, Jen. Reese's, the Reese's lipsticks, in that I feel like if you're gonna go with a scented makeup product, it really needs to smell like that thing in my opinion. And I felt like with the Reese's one, it just wasn't strong enough. Like you really had to smell and really try to find that chocolate peanut butter scent. With these, it's just not accurate, except for one. I do feel like the Girl Scout coconut caramel one does smell like coconut caramel. See, but now I can't even smell it anymore. This is the thing. When I got this, it smelled like coconut caramel. And now on camera, I can't smell it anymore. 
This is the one that I'm wearing on my lips today. It is very bright. I'm not used to wearing this kind of color, but I figured I would try it because you all have been encouraging me to wear brighter lipstick and I appreciate the encouragement. So you have to tell me what you think of it. I do want to tell you a little bit about the formula. It is a matte formula. It does dry down pretty well. This is the lemon one and it's not it's not a real hydrating lipstick. It's more of one that's gonna have a little bit longer of a lasting power. The wear down of it, like as you wear it through the day, it doesn't wear down patchy or anything. It wears down really nicely. My least favorite one is probably the lemon one because it does look super freaking weird on me. Uh, the one I wear the most is the mint one, the Thin Mints one. That's the more brown one because that's the shade that's more me. I mean, even the mint one, like when I first got this, I thought it smelled more like mint. Like I can smell it, but now I smell the makeup just a little bit more. And this lemon one never smell good. It smells like cleaning products. It's awful. Like it does, it does not smell good at all, in my opinion. Unless you were a true lemon lover and you like the smell of Pledge, the cleaning, wood cleaning product, you might like this. The main takeaway I want you to take from this is that the formula is good, especially if you like a matte lipstick that's not uncomfortable. But don't expect these to smell delicious, which was what I expected. I was disappointed. So they're not bad, they're just not great. Next product is a product I actually really, really like. It's just really kind of expensive in my opinion. This is the Sigma Hydro Melt Lip Mask. This actually feels fantastic on the lips. It is extremely occlusive. It feels like it's putting a layer of protection over top of your lips when you wear it. Uh, this is a great nighttime mask. Uh, I don't like wearing this during the day because it is quite heavy, but if you get chapped lips during the day and you just need something that feels good before before you go to bed, something that's just gonna lock everything in and really make your lips heal overnight. This is a fantastic product. It does come with a little cute little spatula here. I've been mostly just using my finger, but if you have long nails, I love that it comes with a spatula because you might have trouble getting in there. Or if you just don't like dipping your fingers in things because that's a thing too. Uh, you, it's nice that it comes with a spatula. It does have a very slight berry scent that I really, really like, but it's not overpowering or overwhelming in any way. It's just a nice product, but is it stand out in the market? Is it amazing? Is it something you need to absolutely go out and get? No, especially at this price point. But if you are looking for a good, like Laneige sleep mask alternative, this is a good one. These I love but not for the purpose that they say that is the main purpose of these. These are the Fruit Lighter Highlighters by Cleona Cosmetics as part of their Dragon Fruit Collection. These are freaking gorgeous. I'm actually wearing them on my eyes today, but I don't think that the camera is doing them justice as far as how beautiful they are. These are meant to be highlighters. I don't know who is using these as highlighters, but I am jealous. <laughs> Let me just tell you I am so jealous because there's no way on this earth that I would be able to use use either one of these as a highlighter. So let me go ahead and swatch them for you so you can see what they look like. I'm just gonna put them on the side of my hand because I, I have so much product on uh, on the other part of my hand. I just wanna show you. This is like the worst swatching. You'd think this was day one for me. La 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 la, there you go. Just, oh my gosh, are you serious right now? Are you serious? <gasps> They're so freaking pretty. If Cleona does something well, they do duochrome multi-chrome shadows really well. That's the worst place. There we go, that's what I'm talking about. Oh my gosh, they do it so, so well. I just feel like marketing these as highlighters is only marketing them to a very small number of people. I feel like these are more like single shadows, but maybe they wanted to charge a higher price point. They are at a $22 price point, give a little bit more in the pan, and then people could use them as eyeshadows if they want. And they are marketed that you can use them on the eyes and face. I just think that it's kind of weird that the primary branding on this is a highlighter, where if I had purchased this to use as a highlighter, I would probably be really disappointed because they're just loud. <laughs> They're just loud to use as a highlighter. If you have used these as a highlighter, I would love to know what your skin tone is. I would imagine this one look, would look beautiful on like a really rich, deep skin tone. This would be gorgeous. This one may be on a medium skin tone. I don't even know though. I don't even know. But if you've used these, tell me if you use them as eyeshadow or highlighter because I'm mostly using them as eyeshadow. Actually, let me show you a photo right now of my eyeshadow in my phone so you can see, because I feel like it really looks better in my phone than it does on camera right now. But overall, I really like these, just not as highlighters. 
Number four, we're going into things that I really like, really, really like. Uh, this one I do have a little critique of, but just for half of it. This is the Umma Beauty by Sharon C. One and Done Two and One Brow Styler. The brow pencil on this is fabulous. It's wonderful. If you like to draw little brow hairs and you like a very pigmented brow product, this is definitely going to be for you. It is very pigmented, goes on very quickly, very easily. It's not too waxy. It doesn't blend out when you use a spoolie to blend it out. It's a fantastic brow product, but it is very pigmented. So just be aware of that. If you like something that kind of goes on light and builds, this is not going to be for you. If you want to just go on bam so you can get out of here and do what you got to do for the day, this is going to be your baby. Now the other side, the other side is a brow gel. This is a little messy, to be honest. I do very much appreciate though, this little teeny tiny brush. This makes it so much easier to get into to the brows. But again, it is very, very pigmented. So you just want to go in easy, especially if you have lighter brows, just go in real easy uh, because you are getting pigment and you're getting it quickly. What I realize is kind of the trick to this is putting it in the brow, letting it sit for a couple of minutes and then spooling it out. Because if you spool it out when it's wet, it kind of makes a mess everywhere. But I do love the effect of this and I do feel like it does hold my brows in place. I don't know if that's the intention of this. I don't know if it's just supposed to be color, but I do feel like it holds my brows in place. It's a nice product. Um, I just, I wish that these were, it was just a little more buildable rather than just going on like instantly, but that's a personal preference thing. All right, number three, this is an alternative. My favorite lashes, false lashes of all time are the Ardell 120s my favorites. I've repurchased them so many times. And in my life, repurchasing anything in the beauty space is a huge compliment. And I've probably repurchased packs of Ardell 120s five or six times, which is, I don't think I've repurchased anything else to that level. But this is an alternative you may wanna look at. So this is the AOA Studio Natural Lashes in the style Scarlet. It's what I'm wearing on my lashes today. These are dupes for the Ardell 120s, in my opinion. I'm gonna put a picture up of the Ardell 120s now. I don't have any in my possession right now. I actually purchased these instead of getting more 120s because I wanted to try them out and see what they were like. They're, to me, they're identical as far as the style of them, where I need to trim them. Um, it seems like an exact copy. I'll put it on the screen exactly how much you'll save by getting these. One thing I love about these and the Ardells is that they are very easy to put on. They do have a plastic band, like a clear plastic band, and I find that's much easier to apply than the ones with the black band because I feel like the black band, if it lifts up, it's very, very noticeable, and they also don't stick as well. So if you're new to using lashes, this style might be a little too dramatic for someone that's brand new to lashes, but if you tried them before and had trouble with them sticking, this might be something you wanna look into. I have had a great experience with them. They last just as long I can use them, you know, four or five uses before I start ruining them by trying to pick the glue off and messing them up. Uh, but they're, they're great, they're wonderful lashes. Number two and number one, I was surprised that I liked as much as I do. Let's talk about number two. This is the Give by Gwen Stefani Eyeshadow Palette in Danger Zone. It's what I use to set up my look today. So I use these on my lid. I use this in my crease to kind of set everything up. Now the color story on this is super boring. It's very Gwen Stefani. It's very like natural, you know, cool toned, but the formula is fantastic. It's wonderful. Uh, do I think it's worth the price point? Probably not, but it's it's really good for what it is. And I purchased it for these colors. <laughs> and because I purchased it for these colors, I can't fault it for not being a color story that's super exciting. Uh, if you're looking for a natural palette that's easy to use, doesn't blend away, is great to just set up a really basic natural look that you can actually turn into more of a deep smoky look if you want to. This is a fantastic palette. It does everything that I want it to do. I have zero complaints about this, zero. Even the light shade still has a nice amount of pigmentation to it. I would love to see Gwen come out with some more exciting color stories, even though that's not really her jam, like maybe even some cool topper shades. That would be fun, I think. So you, she could still kind of stick with her natural look, but maybe have like some duochrome 
monochrome, like yellow shifty or pink shifty shades, I think would be super fun. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what she comes out with in the rest of this line, because I feel like she really introduced it with all of like the Gwen shades. So what's she gonna do next? I don't know, but I was really impressed with this formula, so I wanted to share it with you. And then finally, at number one, da -da 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 -da, this shocked me. This absolutely, totally shocked me because this is by Item Beauty by Addison Ray, And I don't know Addison Ray. I don't know much about her. I don't know, I, I do know that this brand is, the parent company is the same parent company as Ipsy. And I remember when I was an Ipsy person, when I used to get PR from Ipsy and stuff, I got like their Tetris collection. It was trash. I got another collection from them. I forget what it was. It was trash. Pretty much any makeup that I've ever gotten that has been affiliated with Ipsy has been absolutely freaking trash. So I expected this to be absolutely trash and it's not. It's freaking amazing. I was shocked. Absolutely shocked. This is in the shade 110, which is a perfect shade for brightening my under eye area. It would be very light if I was trying to match my shade, but I'm not. It is a nice medium to full coverage concealer. It brightens my under eyes. It does not settle into the the fine lines under my eyes, which is a huge win. Uh, sometimes I set it with powder, sometimes I don't. Uh, both ways, I really, really like. I feel like it does everything I want a concealer to do. I have zero complaints about this. I like the packaging, it's super cute, uh, and I like the doe foot. I like everything about this. It's fantastic. And it's like, it's funny because we used to lose our minds over things like shape tape. And it's like now there are so many really good concealers out there, and this is just another one. Is it head and shoulders better than any concealer I've ever used? No, but I was freaking shocked at how good it actually was. The lasting power is fantastic, even in this Maryland heat. Uh, it goes on easily. I have zero problems with this. It's a fabulous concealer. And at this point, my friend, it is your turn in the collective brain of Make of Awesomeness where we help each other not to buy crap and to buy things that are totally worth it. I would love to know your thoughts about any of the products that I showed you here today. I would love to know what you think if you've tried them. Because again, I only have one face, I got one opinion, but your opinion is so valuable because you have a different face than me. <laughs> And you may really like something or really dislike something, and I'd love to know why. Not just that you disagree, but why? Like, what is it about it? Because that way we can learn from you and we can all not buy crap. Because that's the point of this whole YouTube channel, is to help you not to buy crap. Because our money is really, really important. <laughs> we, we wanna make sure we spend it wisely. So please help out down in the comments down below. If you haven't tried any of these products, you can still participate too. I'd love to know your thoughts about anything or things that you've been trying lately that you've been either loving or really not loving. So maybe I'll buy something for a future video. But anyway, I've gabbed enough. I feel very chatty today. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to hang out just a little bit longer, YouTube should be recommending a couple videos for you right over here to watch. But if it is your time to go, it is no problem at all. Thank you so much for hanging out as long as you did. And mad love to you, my friend. I will see you in a video very, very soon. Bye. That's it. That's what I got.